hey hey how's it going do you know these batteries here these are 2170s or 700s as they're known well a lot of you guys have been asking me to make a pcb board or some way to make these really easy to put into battery packs and today i'm i'm working on that promise right um as you can see here on uh my computer i am designing the pcb that it's going to take that so i here's the mechanical right it's everything and then now i just have to do all the traces and i'm not quite done i am going to share this in a in a full video uh and talk over maybe voiceover just talk about the design concepts and ideas and why do it like that and that sort of stuff right but i'm not done but today uh well let's make a video about a battery because i'm trying to make a video every day even if it's a short one and it's about batteries because i kind of want to get back into making videos and it's so hard when you're doing sort of stuff that i'm doing i'm, I'm making a company from the ground up i'm creating you know a fleet of electric vehicles all this other stuff but i also play with batteries and design things with batteries and so I wanna start making even short videos letting you know what they're doing. So uh, I gotta start with the with the easy ones and I've been doing these e-bike batteries that we have and we I just wanna make them available to you because I don't know what to do with them and you know, there's not enough of them for me to spend quite a bit of time on them, right? So today we have one of those batteries again and it's very similar to the one that we did yesterday. So let me show it to you. So this is today's e-bike battery. Let's look at it. It uh, has this shape and I think it's very popular because I've seen it quite a bit. It is removable because it has a uh, bracket here. And then, uh, what is this? And then like a like a thing here, like a, like a, oh yeah. So it's got the open and close with a key. So it's got this mechanism that you should be able to slide it into your bike and then lock it in there, right? It has a charging port on this side and then a USB probably for data or some kind of stuff in there. Some people have suggested that maybe it's to charge uh, mobile devices, right? USB devices. So that could also be the case. Uh, and then this battery is very simple. It's got just a, a push on button here to be able to tell you the state of charge. Now this battery doesn't seem to be working. So it's a perfect candidate for us to take it apart. Uh, here we go. It's got the same type of connectors as the other batteries that we've been doing in the last few videos. Um, here is what it says, 36 volts. So this is a 10S battery, 8.7, so about nine amp hours, right? Uh, let's see what the battery uh, cells inside are, if they're good quality. So it's got one, two, three, four screws. That's it, four screws, you take them out. I already took them out. And then after that, the pack just comes apart. Bam! Look at that. That's pretty easy. Uh, okay, so this one is a little bit different. It's got this square type of uh, arrangement. It's stuck in there. It's got this little rubber. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So it's got... What is this? Oh, it's for the USB thing here. Uh, this is the charging port, and this is to power the USB. Ah, look at that. This comes off of the USB. Okay, so out of the charging port, and then it gets connected right to the USB. Oh, actually, no. Oh, well, actually both, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. So it has a connector that goes from the charging cables that are coming in and also from the discharging cables that come out. Oh, so that's interesting. So maybe it does both. Um, this thing here. Oh, maybe that's why it doesn't work. Oh, no, I thought maybe it was because it was loose in there. So I keep pressing this, but it doesn't work. Uh, it turns out this... This thing is missing, it's it's loose. And these batteries, they're kind of cheaply made. They have this uh, just like hot glue everywhere. Um, like this stuff was just hot glued into the side of the thing, so it works itself. 
lose. But it seems like this is a standalone system, just like on the other battery that we did yesterday. Uh, so if you were to change the BMS because this BMS is bad, then you could still have this work because this just reads, it's a simple, you know, voltage. Uh, it reads the voltage and then it applies a certain amount of, of you know, of uh, state of charge in there. So it's a pretty simple device, uh, kind of off the shelf in China. Okay, so here's the battery. Seems to be 10 across and three down, so 30 cells. And these seem to be the same INR18650 29Es. So these are good quality Samsung cells that uh, came on the other battery that we did yesterday, this one right here, right? So 29, 2.9 or uh, 2,900 milliamp hours. These are really good cells. And then here is the BMS. Let's take it apart. Keep the label there so we can't even tell, but Wow, this connector is super glued in there. So let's try checking the voltages of all the cells first and then applying a charge to the input, to the charger thing, and then I see if that wakes it up. If not, then we might just have a bad BMS. Okay, we're gonna measure voltage. So here's the most positive. Okay, so this is the only thing this thing had. It was just the batteries were a bit too low. The BMS was doing its job, was turned off. And so you just have to charge it a little bit. And then once you charge them up, now the batteries start. You know, when you first charge these, you know, it's, it's a good idea to charge it slow. If you have, uh, you know, like a, a like the ones we sell these uh, chargers that are 1.7 amp, right? So that's kind of slow speed to charge these. Uh, it'll take, you know, a couple hours, three hours or something like that to get this fully charged. That's really good way to do it, right? And if, if the cells drift apart, or if the cells do something funny because they were old and they are not recovering correctly, then the BMS should keep you safe, right? So um, that is the good thing about this BMS is sometimes not all of them are bad, but you know, you're gonna get some that are bad. Uh, one out of the three battery packs that we've taken apart here in the last three days has had a bad BMS, right? So we're more so than not, uh, the BMSs are, are okay. You don't have to remove them, you don't have to replace them. You just have to kind of do some stuff, maybe charge, kickstart the batteries, that sort of stuff. A lot of these uh, things that people in the DIY battery world have been doing for a long time. Now, is there any dangers in doing what we're doing here? Yeah, everything is risky. There's, there's inherent risks for everything. You just have to be careful and you just have to do it slowly. Don't do something dumb, right? Um, and so what we're doing here is slowly charging it from the very beginning. And then on the first charge, maybe you charge it while it's like part like this, and then you come every hour or so, or every 20 minutes and check that the batteries are not hot, they're not gassing, uh, that they're not doing something that they're not supposed to do. If you have a thermal camera, then that would be very, very useful in fact. Let me show you what the thermal image would look like on this one right now. I'm gonna bump it up, charge it fast. Oh, look at that. So it doesn't let me... Okay, so I set this to charge at 34. That's another thing that you can do. You can charge it up to not 100%, you know, for the first few cycles. And then, then you can let it go and charge it 100%. But there's a few things that you can do uh to to try to keep these safe you know and minimize the risks of playing with batteries so let me put the thermal camera and then show it to you all right here we go that is the battery that is charging right now i'm charging it at three amps and look with your hand by the way look this is my hand right this is what the temperature of my hand looks like uh does it say right here what is it yeah, so I'm at 34C, I guess that's what it is. The battery is at 28C, but you see how half of that one, that one's at 30C, right? Now, you can't tell that with your hand. Like, no, it just, everything feels cool. 
But the thermal camera is able to see differences in temperature that are so small, right? Now, I don't know. I think maybe there's something off here and maybe this battery is not going to turn out to be 100%. But maybe not. Maybe this is just what's happening right now. Let's see if it gets... So if we increase the charging voltage... So now we're pushing 5 amps into the battery, right? Let's see if that increases. And of course, I don't know, uh, what would be hot? Something like, I don't know, I would say like, if it gets down to like 80 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit, which is what, like 40 degrees, maybe like 40 degrees C, maybe we'll start worrying about it, right? But right now, obviously there's something up with those half of that pack. Why is half of that pack uh, creating a little bit of heat while the rest of the pack is not? I don't know, that's interesting. But this is why a tool like this is very useful. And you know, you do this on the first try and then you do it a second, third, and then you know, if the heat starts, uh, dissipating throughout the entire pack then maybe you know it kind of fix itself but if this thing continues to happen you know cycle after cycle after cycle then you know you have a pack that might be um compromised right and so then this is how you minimize the thing you just don't keep charging it all the time fully charged like this like right now i'm pushing like five amps in there it's quite a bit that's probably about the max that the bms will allow us to do Huh, it was very interesting. Okay, let's leave it there. Come back in five minutes and see where we're at. All right, so it is many minutes later, I don't know, maybe like 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, and look at the battery. Ooh, it is hot. Now it's at 40, and that's what I said, right? About 80 degrees, but here's what I did. I got restless, <laughs> and I bumped up my charger here to 10 amps. So I'm really charging this battery really fast just so I can finish this video. So that's why it got this hot, right? I mean, but see the thing, it's only that side of the battery. So there's some issue there. And if I, you know, if someone were to find this issue in one of the batteries, I would say, keep an eye on it, you know, and charge it through a few cycles, charge it slow or charge it like this. Uh, 40C, that's about 80, eh, you would start getting worried. I would lower, the the speed at which uh we're charging this battery right now this battery is around 40 volts now so it's i would say it's about 80 percent charge right so <clears throat> i'd say we'll just for the sake of time here for this video i'll end it here we'll test it right and see if we can get good voltage out of it or whatever so all right so i have disconnected the charger let's check out the light here oh yeah look at that right so about 80 percent four out of the five bars i have connected uh just using cables in there to the port and then i put this little uh meter uh there's a voltage um yeah i haven't the 12.2 that was for some other battery i haven't reset it so what i'm gonna attempt to use as a uh load is going to be this EcoFlow Max and we're just going to plug it into the solar charge port and it's going to take the energy from that battery and it's going to uh, apply it here. This is at 1% so it needs to be charged badly. So let's connect the thing here. Okay, here we go. Let's look at the meter here. 
All right. Five amps, seven amps, eight amps, nine amps. Okay, so it's around eight amps. About 300 watts. So that's probably a limitation of this. This is only at 37 volts, it only pulls 300 amps, right? If the voltage goes higher, then it'll pull more. This thing will do up to like 700 amps or something like that, 700 watts, right? So the amperage will go up to like 12 or something like that. But right now it's just pushing. So there we go. This battery right now is charging our um, EcoFlow Max here. Uh, solar charge generator inside so you can use these batteries for that any of these that are anywhere between 30 and 100 volts they can be used together with these solar generators and you know the not just the ecoflow but the blue eddy uh and some of the other ones right those are the two main uh units or of course these are e-bikes you can use them for e-bikes and scooters and all this other stuff so there we go this is just an example of what you can get with these batteries that we're doing. I just picked a random one that wasn't, didn't seem to be alive and see if I could do something to wake it up. And we are uh, successful at waking it up. Like I said, this one might have an issue because it gets hot, right? It gets warm. And by the way, it got warm. Um, so just if you find your battery like that, then just keep an eye on it and stuff. Uh, and then I... Uh, yeah, and you should be able to get a battery. Hopefully, you, you should be able to get one that it doesn't do that. Most of our batteries, I think, they have small issues that are easily solvable. Um, and that's what we're trying to do here. So, these batteries are going to be available at Jack 35. Uh, we're just blowing them out. I think we're selling for like $29. This is like over 100 and probably 50 200 battery if you need if you have to get this you know uh, at the store uh, or as a replacement these are these have good quality cells because i think these are genuine you know what the manufacturers used to sell so yeah less than a dollar a cell on a pack like this you might have to do some work so there you go if you feel like diying if you need one of these to do a diy project or if you have that e-bike that uses that particular battery there you go here's an opportunity to get something for not a lot of money and it which just requires a little bit of tinkering to get it up and running right so there we go thank you for watching this video we'll see you guys on the next one and if you're interested in seeing the whole pcb design thing on how to build a battery using a pcb and i will be uh uploading that video probably tomorrow um it's going to be quite a, quite detailed. So if you're interested in that stuff, then come back tomorrow and watch that video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.